very loud. <laughs> so my name is Maria Noor. I'm a young author. Actually, just finished high school last year and published two books. Um, I'm also a journalist in the making. I'm in St. Paul's University. I'm currently a CEO of Black Beast Safaris. <laughs> I'm also a Hina artist, so for the ladies in the house. <laughs> so um, she is a very good friend of mine. Yeah, <laughs> that's why I'm here for her today, actually. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hi. Hi. Gosh, this evening is exactly how I envisioned it in my mind. I had pictured Mwangi Kiara cruising around, terrorizing one of you with questions. I had pictured everyone just dreading the mic as, as much as I did. So it's nice that all of you are on the receiving end of some butterflies. Um, I had pictured it um, very chill and mellow. I had pictured people talking about their aspirations and dreams. I had pictured everything except I had pictured the rain, and it hasn't rained. So, I don't know, I'm confused by the weather right now. Yeah. Anyway, so my name is She, at least that is what most people know me as. I write as um, Jenny Marima, and I am super excited to have this launch for a book that is um, small, but a book that is really special. And if you don't take the mic from me, I might rumble on and on about what that book has done for me. And I might uh, take over the program. So, to avoid that, let me hand the mic back to you. Shiro, I don't mind you taking over the program at all. Alright, um, just for both of you, I'd like to help us understand, indeed, where did it all begin? Because you're here, you've published a book. Maria has also published a few books. Where did it all begin for you? Where did it start, essentially? Um, I don't know if, I, if there was a starting date for me. I think I just found out that I was a writer at some point. And having said that, I'm still a work in progress. You know, I, I mean, I, I'm, I, I still have ways, 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 ways to go. But I, I found out a long time ago. I, I'm not one of those people who kind of just discovered the other day that, you know, I wanted to do this for a long time. Some of you all who knew me from Zamani, I think, had a clue. Yeah, so it started a long time ago. I think I, I have very distant memories of writing like a newspaper for our family. You know, like, dad brought Sujri Watch to the house, the headlines, auntie so and so um, visited and blah, 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 or we are going to something fun and all. So I remember doing that. I also remember um, scribbling like a novel in an exercise book and passing it around. And I remember my siblings would read it and... Um, there was a season in our lives where there was not, there were a lot of things that were not going right. So that kind of novel that I was writing then was what was kind of an escape for everyone, you know. So I'd write and then I'll wait for the next chapter and I'd pass it around and read it. So, yeah, so those are my early memories, if yeah. I can call it that. Yeah. Yeah. Along with that, maybe you could tell us any early influences that a relative who perhaps uh, gifted you something. Um, maybe not off the top of my head, uh, but my there were very many books at home, you know. So my parents were readers. I don't remember any time when my parents said you need to read a book. I just saw them read, and I guess I was just copying them. And, and and I don't read nearly as much as I ought, but yeah. So okay. yeah. Oh wow, my journey of writing began way, way kitambo, you know. It started when I was in class one, that was 2007. Uh, it started as a joke actually because of the compositions you were writing. Then in 2011, uh, there was a time my mom gave us money, you know, that time 50 bob was a lot of money, you know. So she gave us to buy food, but we didn't buy. I influenced my siblings to go buy books <laughs> instead. <laughs> so when she came home, she was like, when the last one was crying, and he was like, Mommy, we haven't eaten. She was like, why? What happened? Yeah. 
So I got scolded, but then again I continued. 2013, that was my breakthrough when I was in class 7 and I was doing my KCP examination to get an index number. I wrote my first book. Oh, it was crazy actually. Whilst in class 7? Yes. <laughs> I was in class 7, 2013. I, I was schooling at, uh, in, in a, uh, it's called Ina Kopedel View Academy in Kayole. So it, it just started as a joke. So I passed it around my all my classmates and everyone read and they were like, okay, this is good stuff. I gave it to the headmaster and he was like, this is a good thing, continue. So that's where I got the courage to take it to a publisher of which I was rejected because of my age and that time there was this thing called uh, the Westgate attack. So whenever you were wearing a hijab, you were branded a bad name. So it was a very bad thing. So I got depression at that age. 2014 when I was sitting for my class eight examination, that's when I took it to Kenya Literature Bureau and I got my, my first book published when I was in form three. So it took me four years. <laughs> And then the second book also, it got out when I was sitting for my Form 4 last year. It was not a very good year for me because I didn't go to school at all. I just went and sat for my KCSC exam because I was very sick. I was, I was actually I'm a sick person. I have been sick since I was young. Operation, hospital, medicine. I actually feel like I should be a doctor without going to medicine school. I, sh I should think about it. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm allowed to do a joke like that. But maybe if you could tell us any challenges you've encountered, uh, both personally and uh, that you're willing to share, of course, both personally and maybe circumstantially as well. Um, well, writing, just the act of writing in and of itself is challenging. Getting the time to write, yeah. um, getting, believing in your own writing, I think maybe that is. My, my one thing, just wondering whether I'm good enough or, you know, so just fighting imposter syndrome yeah. to some degree. So that I think was my major challenge. In fact, I think it was so severe that when I started writing, I started, I, I used the name that I am not very popularly known as because, you know, you know, just in case it doesn't work out, no one will know who, who Jenny Marima is. I mean, everyone knows she, you know, but who is Jenny Marima, you know? So I was like, let me just use that other name. So in case, like, it's a fail, um, then I, I have an escape with my other names. And, yeah, so I think maybe those, those internal struggles, those, those, were, those are my major ch challenges. But overall, just getting published is in Kenya and the world over is a challenge in and of itself. She has a story and I have to tell. I think everyone here might have a testimony of how their manuscript is gathering dust in X, Y, Z, or whatever, you know. So just getting published in and of itself, getting um, feedback that is not favorable. It's not easy to hear sometimes. Um, even when you get published, getting selling your own books, you know, it's. Yeah. The, the challenges don't stop, you know, just when you've crossed this one hurdle and then some other thing comes and so on, yeah. But that, all that being said, it's been very, very fulfilling and I can't imagine doing anything else. Uh, the challenges are so many on my end because uh, actually my background was not that well. 2009, I had lost my dad, so we had to go to Kakuma and, you know, and all that struggles, me leaving school for a while, uh, meningitis, all that, all illnesses, financial, we were not stable. And then um, when the first time I took my manuscript to a publisher, you know, they, 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 you, know you know, the funny thing with it is that they call me incompetent. <laughs> for real, they call me incompetent. That edit, Akini Kimwana Munga Monekanie. For real, he called me incompetent and I was depressed. You know that I was like, I'm good for nothing. The, there are those 
those things that were ringing in my head. So when I took it to KLB, KLB was, they were very nice to me. Actually, I should really compliment the publishing manager there, Mr. Jumba. He's the best, actually. So he encouraged me to write on and to continue with my studies. He, sh he told me not to give up. And then the major thing that with KLB is that actually all publishing houses, they will return to your they'll return you to the, uh, the yeah, they'll return your manuscript after every six months, telling you do this, remove that, and then you know the part that you wanted most to display to the world is being cut off. Unambiwa, this part, no. That was the major challenge I really faced. And um, another challenge is the market. It, you know, getting convincing someone to buy a book is not easy. And considering the generation that we are in, people yeah. are, we are, how do I say, the digital generation. Yeah, that's the problem that I have. But overall, trust me, I like the process. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe we could uh, start with you and then come to she again. Mm. Along with, you mentioned something today, and I think she touched on it, uh, getting rejected. You know, uh, submit your manuscript to a publisher and they, Sometimes, often, oftentimes, indeed, uh, very harsh with their words. Do you think everybody has a right to get published? And coupled with that question is sometimes because writing is personal expression, right? So, can personal expression be wrong? Maybe answer that. And, and she was wrong. Actually, I think uh, everyone deserves to get published because every story has something to say. You can't say that you can. You have. You can like. Saying this story should be out, but this one should not be out. That's the thing that with, with the manuscript, uh, the publishers, they just uh, have that perception that this story is not, it's not going to be consumed by the market out there. That's the major perception that they have outside there. But the thing is that everyone deserves to get published. And uh, when it comes to writing, yes, that's why nowadays people are opting for self-publishing. But self-publishing, I am not recommending it to any budding author because you might not land in the market that easily. Because I'm seeing it from experience. I've seen some authors, even KLB themselves, they tell me I am very lucky to get published because they are, pro they are professors with PhD and their work are just getting, they are just being thrown every day, you know. And then the worst thing is that sometimes when you take your work to the publisher, actually that happened to me, they lose your work. That's the worst part. They tell you your work is lost, so we send it. So it has to go through the same process again. That's the worst part. And actually, funny story, <laughs> this thing that I'm discussing here was my project for my exam today. <laughs> yes. Wow, I think it's a very hard question. Does everyone deserve to get published? I think everybody deserves to be heard. I think everybody deserves to have their experience validated. Um, I think that. But as to whether everybody deserves to get published is, is a decision to be made by the publisher, mainly because publishing is a business and uh, there are business uh, implications to publishing decisions. They will publish what they think that what they think they will recoup. Yeah. Um, they, they will put their money. They will invest in what they think they will recover in. And so, not not everybody meets that threshold, and not because they are not good enough. It's just because maybe whatever they've written is outside the their business scope or whatever, you know. So, yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, uh, let me answer it that way. Okay. Yeah. Um, Growing industry, the publishing industry in Kenya. Uh, the chairman sits right here. What would you tell him to? What would you like to see grow in this industry, and what would you like to see end in the industry? Okay. Um, the chair of the okay, Kenya Publishers Association. Sorry, right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, well, I suppose I would want to see a, a, a surge in creative works because unfortunately creative works are not given much prominence because they don't bring in as much as course books and textbooks. Hence why so many people are having to venture out, unfortunately, into self-publishing because 
I don't know about all of you, but I know when I've written something and it's in my computer and only I can see it, sometimes it just gets, you know, like I'm about to explode and I just want it out, what, whichever way, how, you know, like whether it's self-publishing, whether it's whoever, even there are times you get so desperate that even that river road person you're being warned about, you're like, you know what, it doesn't matter, just, you know, give me an outlet already, you know. So I, I would want to that all the frustrated writers who have all these stories that are in their computers, in their heads, that they would find an outlet. And I, I would wish that more money would be channeled into that direction. So that, that is what I would see, like to see more of. I would also love to see more of these types of conversations, you know, because they are very fulfilling um, and we learn so much from one another. Yeah. Oh, okay. I suppose less of piracy, um, yeah, because it's just um, evil that you have put in the work and then people just share your, a PDF of your book or photocopies of your book. Yeah, I would like to see less of that. Okay. Yeah. I invite anyone with a question for Maria, and then after she's done, then we can just what's the next If I was to see the chairman of KPA, Mr. Lawrence Jan, today! <laughs> Actually, it's about that thing of uh, publishers uh, not being able to read the work of authors. It's very disappointing to see your work. You've, take, you've put a lot of effort in your work and it has, you've submitted, you've gathered the courage to go to a publishing house and submitted your work and somebody tells you incompetent. You know, that really hurts. <laughs> it's that thing even you my brother, kind. But anyway, I would like, if I would like to tell him that either I support she, that creative work should be invested in more. Because if you see the market today, uh, textbooks are really flooding. And now that every publishing house has gained, uh, I think, tender, I think it's called that way, tender, to supply textbooks to uh, uh, all schools, I think they should all get that chance of. Uh, now investing in um, creative work, poetry, stories, fiction, and fiction, a children's book. Because if we want a reading culture for our children, we must start even with the people who are supposed to develop the work. Okay. Yeah. All right. We had a question over there. And then we move. Anyone else with a question? I'll take maybe two, and then we can move on to the next. Thank you. Right. <coughs> I'm sorry. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, before I. Uh, Going to my question, I just like to ask the audience who was here during the first uh, first uh, session. Uh, two people, anyway. two is better than nothing. Anyway, you've heard from real life authors the issue of problems with publishers. I'll not delve into it because only two people were there the first time. So I just like to to caution people. That the issue of the issue of publishers should not be taken for granted. As we've heard from one of our authors here, she has had problems with publishers. Okay, now to my question. For my first question is to you, Maria. Maria. Uh, given that even when a kitten stares at itself in the mirror, it sees a lion. You know, if you are called incompetent. I think you should try and develop a thick skin because you're going to become, you want to live off writing. I assume so. So, I think, don't you think that maybe the, the usage of the term incompetent, if you had looked at it from a developmental aspect, they were trying maybe to push you to try and reach into the depths of your capabilities. Don't you think that is it possible for you to look at it from that way? And uh, to Madam Shi, where do you think you'll be in terms of writing? And I stress that in terms of writing as an author, say 10 years from now, given that you've highlighted the challenges that burning authors face. And now for a short sentence, for a short question for now with the both of you. Have you looked at things from an, an alternative point of view? Instead of writing, is it possible to produce your works in audio form? 
You know people are lazy when it comes to reading, but when it comes to listening, they are very keen. So I was just thinking, can you look at it from that aspect? First question, um, the word incompetent, if I actually I looked at it, the first time I didn't take it as de developmental because it really hurt my feelings. At that age, <laughs> it really hurt my feelings. But as I grew up with time, and now I'm 20 years old, there's that, how many years is that? Seven year period, I've taken it to be a developmental part because it's what is driving me. Because now, can you imagine the publisher who rejected me called me this this year, August, before I joined university, and told me to write for them an IRA reader for the Ugandan curriculum. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And uh, to the second question, um, the audio part. Um, honestly, okay, to me, I find talking, okay, there's, uh, there's something that, okay, I read somewhere, it said that the written part is more felt than the spoken part. To me, I find it, when I write it, Okay, let me use a small example. It's a book, by the way, but not a bad book. Fifty Shades of Grey. How many of you have read that book? <laughs> For ever, if anyone who has read that book, you'll know what I mean by the, the written part, you feel it. Because to me, I find expressing my feelings in written form, especially now my book, the second book, Nobody Knows My Pain. Um, nobody knows my pain comes from the years I've been sick and nobody has really known about it. So through it, I have expressed my pain and my feelings. I don't think telling someone how I feel will really make them understand me. That's my point of view. I suppose there's a need to exercise this belief in publishers knowing what to say to a 13 year old. Actually, if I could say something about that, I think it, it, an incompetent publisher would use such words, you know, I, I don't know, I can't imagine, there's so many other words to describe deficiencies that are in a script, other than incompetent, I, I want to imagine, anyway, so, well, look, I mean, they're calling you now, so, who, who, who's having the last laugh, yeah, yeah. wow. That question was so deep, um, especially because I usually just think three months ahead. Um, so when you ask me about my 10-year plan, um, I pull my hair a little. Um, with that said, I think maybe I could start by saying I don't leave off the books you see there. I look forward to that time when I can just write and leave off my writing. But now I have to hustle. Liz has to call me for proofreading jobs, you know. Dwati has to hook me up with 101 gigs every other time because um, unfortunately we, we, you don't quit your day job in Kenya. I don't know which countries you do, but I know for sure I quit my day job and hence why I am not growing any bigger because <laughs> the hustle is real, the grind is real and um, yeah, so there are so many things. We have so many pressing issues that sometimes our creative... Um, Ventures take the back burners, you know, so sometimes I want to write this great Kenyan novel, for instance, but I also have to pay my rent, so I have to edit for some other rich guy. They're really boring stuff, just so I can get, you know, by through the next couple of months, you know. So the realities of life hold us back sometimes, you know, which is why we are always kind of on the lookout, we're like hawks, you know, hungry, you know, on the lookout for opportunities for residencies and grants and things like that, so that they can take the burden of, the financial burden of living off us so we can focus on the creative side. So, yeah. Uh, 
I, I have um, two questions. Uh, do you have, like, for both of you, do you have, like, a secret place that you sit and write? Or what's your strategy uh, in coming up with the books and the authors uh, you, you've done? Um, I think we'll go that My mind has gone down. <laughs> <laughs> Um, for your question, yes, I have a secret place. Um, my secret place is my bed at 2 a.m. in the morning. Because that's when the world is at rest. And that's the time I can really think. Uh, and for me to develop a story, it depends with what I see. Personally, I'm a big, I'm a real, real big fan of my tattoos. They call it Nganyas. So whenever, if you have my number, you'll be seeing me flying with my tattoos every day, morning and evening. So whenever I get a story from there, I write. Uh, it gives me a platform. So for my, like, for my first book, I will be back. The title, uh, the name comes from my father's last word before he died. And nobody knows my pain comes from the life history that I've gone through for the medical issues I had. So the story is talking about Somali cultural education, and um, but I've, there's a part I I am uh, there's a how do I say, I'm a character in the book, so that's uh, and my stories come from real life situations. That's why um, yeah that's that's why I have a lot of manuscripts pending at KLB right now. Yeah. I don't have a secret place, but I have a secret. <laughs> and the secret is when a story is burning inside and I am at that point where I am possessed because I usually get to that point where like I can't breathe until I tell this story then anywhere is good for writing bed, sofa, whatever here, there, waiting for people anywhere is good but when, that's when I'm at that place when I'm not at that point maybe I'll probably want to sit at my desk or something, yeah, so. Okay, I'll take just one and then two questions and then maybe. Hey, if you have further questions, we can direct them at the end. But you can keep them there. So my question was about, um, you won uh, an award recently, the Jomo Kenyatta Award. Um, how important are these kind of awards uh, for a writer? And what has our work done for you personally? Well, first, I feel very fortunate to have won that award. Um, I still have moments where, like, I'm walking on the street and then I remember, I'm like, oh, I won, you know, and I stop in my tracks and I'm assuming everyone can see, you know, my thoughts. I'm like, oh my gosh, I won, I won, I won, you know. So I'm still kind of semi in that state, you know, even right now, like, I see like on the on the on the poster there's you might not see it but there's a little ring there and it says my book winner of I'm like oh my god my gosh like you know so it does that for me for one you know like just surprises me all the time um I think awards uh, are important uh, because especially for someone like me who maybe struggled with whether my work is good enough whether you know Natasha Mboga for me, that kind of validation means the world. You know, it's it just, the feeling is indescribable. You know, I can't begin to express the depth of my joy, my, you know. With that said, um, I think I would still be writing, uh, whether or not there was an award, because I was writing, I've tried for many things before, I have not been awarded many times before, but I did not stop. So I think they're important. They should keep coming, and especially for the semi-retired, like myself, I'm not <laughs> employed in the traditional sense. Um, that that check that came, man, you know, like, <laughs> it sorted so many things, you know, like, I don't know how many saw my whatever video, my victory video, but that joy, part of it was like, rent, really, <laughs> you know, like those. There was so much packed in that one video, you know. It wasn't just, hey, I've won, yay, I'm 
I'm happy. You know, it was like, oh my gosh, feels everything. And on top of that, just feeling like, oh my gosh, like yeah. I won. Oh my gosh, like the, 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 the story I wrote, the story that no one asked me to write, you know, that I just wrote, you know, yeah. in my free time. By free, I mean the time I had no clients, you know. <laughs> And, and shock on, upon shock, it wins, you know. So, yeah, so awards are awesome. They should keep coming, especially to the unemployed. <laughs> yeah. But, but I, I think I would still, I, I would for sure still be writing, if whether or not they were there. Yeah.